Folks, and welcome back to What's Cooking in Bert's Kitchen. Today we're going to work on macaroni and cheese. Going to put a little twist on it, but nothing that uh, you're not going to be able to handle at home. First thing you're going to need is a good frying pan here. I use cast iron. You know how I love to use my cast iron. Get that on about four or five. You don't need it spectacularly hot. To this, we're going to add. Oh, about a tablespoon and a half, maybe two tablespoons of olive oil. Not so much of a flavor component. You don't have to go for the really expensive extra virgin stuff. Standard old olive oil will do. In that pan, we're going to get some vegetables sweating out. We've got an onion and a pepper. I'm going to use half that onion, half of this pepper. The other half I'll just wrap up and save for another dish, put them in a meatloaf or something. As I've always told you, make sure your knife good and sharp. A dull knife is where you're going to wind up just damaging yourself. You've got to cut yourself. Set that other half aside. Get it cut down to a nice fine dice. Remember always to keep your fingers curled underneath so you don't cut yourself. Get them diced down as fine as you can without actually turning them into pulp. If you want bigger chunks, please be my guest. We'll get that right down into the oil. Then we're right after the pepper. Cut it in half. Get rid of the uh, ribs and the seeds in there. Nice and cleaned out. Cut it down. Same size. As the onions. If you wanted bigger chunks, make sure that your onions and your peppers are the same size so that they cook in about the same amount of time. We're just basically sweating them down until they get kind of soft. So here we have our onions and peppers. They're sweating out. While they're sweating out, meanwhile, and then get a nice wooden spoon there. Give them a good stir every couple of minutes. So while that's sweating out, we're going to come back to our cutting board here. And here I have some sweet Italian sausage. You can use mild, you can use hot, whatever you like. I'm making this for my kids. They like the uh, sweet Italian sausage. No problem. Just run your knife down the edge there. And let's get this casing off of it. But really quite simple. Just pull the casing off there. Dispose of the casing. There's no culinary tricks for what you're going to do to use this casing ever again. Okay, so, our vegetables are sweating down, they're starting to soften up, let's brown up this meat. Just use your hands and break it up into little bits, get it spread out through there. So now that we got our meat in there, I want to crank our heat up just a little bit higher. This meat's going to let off a little bit of fat. That'll keep our vegetables from actually uh, caramelizing. 
break it up with your spoon as it's going along. Meanwhile, while we're waiting for that to keep to get browned up, back here I have a pan with six or so quarts of water in it. This is going to be for our pasta. Basically, crank that sucker on high. And what you want to do is add a lot of salt. This is the only chance you're going to have to flavor your pasta. If you'd like that to come to a boil faster, pop a lid on. Our meat's only got a minute or so to go, so now we're going to throw some garlic in. We don't want to throw it in right away because garlic will burn and turn bitter. Get your garlic mashed up as fine as you can. Now we're going to show you another little culinary trick. I don't want hunks of garlic in what I'm doing. I want this into a paste. So how am I going to do that? Well, I've got it chopped up pretty fine here. What I'm going to do, add a little bit of salt. And just put some pressure on it, drag my knife across it. The salt acts like a grit, and it's turning all of this, breaking this all down into paste to draw some of the moisture out of it. Now you can do it this way, or if you wanted to, you have one of these, a mortar and pestle. Throw your garlic and your salt into there. And just grind them down. Okay, so it's all nice and browned down. The garlic's cooked for a minute. Get it off the heat. This is where we're going to make the cheese part for our macaroni and cheese. In this pan, going to add a cup and a half of milk. We're going to get the heat on low, two or three. Be very careful with your milk. You don't want it to burn to the bottom of your pan. That's why our heat is so low. Okay, as we can see here, our, border, our water has now come to a rolling boil. It's at this point that a lot of people would go ahead and add oil into this. I don't particularly care for it. It really doesn't do much for your pasta. Water and oil never really combine well. It's not going to stop things from sticking so much. So just go ahead and add your pasta. You can use elbows here. Uh, I happen to be using these small shells, but a pound of pasta. I'm using the small shells because my son likes the likes them. To keep your pasta from sticking, just make sure you're stirring. You're going to stand here for about eight minutes or so and let it cook. We want it a little slightly less than al dente because we're going to throw it in the oven to bake it off. Now at this point, start your oven preheating to 350 degrees. Our milk is also letting off a little bit of steam. Now we want to add some cheese into here. In this case I'm using sharp cheddar and I'm going to add about three cups. This is a one pound bag, which is four cups. So I'm going to add about three quarters of that. The rest I want to save to sprinkle on the top. Also to this, I'm going to add maybe about a quarter of a cup of Parmesan cheese. You can grate your own or use the stuff out of the box. It's just a flavor component, whichever one makes you happier. And all the time, keep stirring that pasta. Also, get out a whisk. And stir your cheese down into your sauce. Make sure you got plenty of water in there. A lot more than what your pasta is. This also will leave lots of room while it's boiling for the pasta to move around. And keep it from sticking. Now as for this cheese sauce, 
doesn't really matter what kind of cheese you're using, whatever makes you happy. If you happen to have a couple of hunks of Swiss cheese laying around, a couple of slices of American, and a little bit of cheddar left over, or some mozzarella, please be my guest. Whatever's going to make you happy. I wouldn't necessarily recommend like a Roquefort Blue or anything of that nature. Okay, so all the while here, stirring our pasta every, you know, 15, 30 seconds. Take a little piece here and right where I want it to be, just slightly less than al dente. You'll see our cheese sauce has become nice and smooth as well. Get the heat turned off on that. Let's drain our pasta in the sink. Get it back in the pan. Now when you drain it in the sink, some people have told you, shock it with cold water. Don't do that. All that's going to do is wash the starch off of your pasta and your sauce won't stick to it. We will add our peppers and onions, garlic and sausage. A lot of people like bacon in their uh, macaroni and cheese. Please, be my guest. Fry up some bacon, get it nice and crisp. Break it into little bits. Mix it all through here so it's nice and well distributed. And then, add your cheese sauce. I'm using a spatula here make sure I scrape out every last bit of this because, man, is this stuff good. Get it all combined nice. Make sure every bit of your pasta and your sausage and everything is coated in there. Let that sit for a minute. In a small bowl, we want to get about a half a cup of breadcrumbs. For that, a tablespoon of olive oil. Get it all mixed in there. So it's not quite a paste. Okay, I'm using these little single serving dishes. You want to fill them pretty full with your macaroni and cheese, like such. That cheddar cheese that we had reserved. Put a nice little layer on there. And then our breadcrumb mixture. Put it right on top. Now if you were doing this, serving this family style at this point, you'd use a big casserole dish. Basically the same procedure. Okay, so here I have everything set out on a baking tray just in case there's any spillage. There shouldn't be, but just in case. Got to set out on a baking tray. We're going to pop them into the oven. Now, everything is hot right now because we've just taken it all off the stove. So we really don't need it in there for very much. So we'll place it into the oven at 350 degrees for 15 minutes. Now, let's say, like me, you're making seven servings here. Still got some macaroni left over. And if you were doing in these individual serving containers, what do you do with that extra macaroni? The rest of it, what I did is I put it in this little tiny ceramic casserole dish that came with a lid. Pop the lid on there. Stick it in the fridge for a week. It'll hold up for a week. I'll serve this as a side dish with, say, some pork chops or something I'm going to make later on this week, maybe a meatloaf. Okay, so, we're out of the oven here. As you can see, they're nice and toasty brown on the top. Set our macaroni on the plate. A little vegetable alongside it. You've got a perfectly tasty dish. 
that everybody's going to enjoy. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope we taught you something. Please come back for our next episode and see what's cooking in Bert's Kitchen.